Hey everyone! With an amazing amount of injuries already plaguing the Lightning before our first game on Thursday, what are our forward lines going to look like? And when everyone's healthy, what can we look forward to this season on the Tampa Bay Lightning? Find out on this episode of Distant Lightning. Okay, everyone, first game of the regular season is finally here. It's uh, Thursday, the third, against the Florida Panthers. And the Panthers actually are, you know, in the top, like, 10 teams, most likely to win the Stanley Cup this year by Vegas odds, last time I checked, anyhow. Uh, they picked up an awesome goaltender, Bobrovsky, who foiled us in the playoffs. So it should be an exciting game. Uh, looking ahead at the schedule, so we have one home game, and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six away games, and, and then finally coming back home to face the Colorado Avalanche on the 19th. Uh, some key games I'm looking forward to on uh, next Thursday, the 10th, we play Toronto. That'll be an interesting one. Of course, we get to face How You Drewin on Tuesday, the 15th, and the good old uh, Beantown Boston Bruins on the 17th. I can hear you booing from here, by the way. Um, looking at our roster right now, as it stands, we have four key injuries. Braden Point, we know about with his uh, hurt hip. He's in recovery. Listed day-to-day, -day, I guess. Cedric Paquette got hurt against the Panthers, I think. Um, undisclosed injury. Who knows? He's usually in and out of our roster. Uh, Tyler Johnson. Um, but I think he's coming back for the first game. Not 100% sure. And then Victor Hedman, who seems to get hurt now and then a little bit more frequently the last couple of seasons. He's day-to-day. -day. So what is our opening night roster going to look like? Well, if we look at the NHL.com Lightning official site, um, they're showing, you can see on screen now, our forwards and defensemen, goaltenders. Uh, they've got Tyler Johnson in the lineup, so I guess he's not hurt anymore. But everybody else that they say is hurt is still hurt. Um, they also list in, in the injured list somebody named Daniel Walcott. Well, I didn't even take the time to look him up. No idea who that is. But interesting little tidbit. Maybe it's an error. He's probably from some other team. If we look at uh, dailyfaceoff.com, um, they have a nice little graphic showing what the line's probably going to be for the first game. And they've got uh, first line Tyler Johnson centering with Stamkos and Kucherov on the flanks. If this doesn't build Tyler Johnson's value, so Seattle picks him up uh, in their inaugural draft, uh, or for tradability, I don't know what will. Tyler Johnson doesn't get a, an amazing amount of goals flanked by those two uh, for while paint Point is out injured. I don't know what else can. Second line, pretty interesting. They move Sorelli up. He's centering a line with Palat and Kalorn. Uh, so he's flanked by a lot of muscle. And that's a good defensive line if we need to hold back the other team, uh, maybe put against their top line and hold them back. That'll be an excellent uh, use of that line. Third line, another interesting one. They put, uh, put Yanni Gord in center, flanked by Matthew Joseph and Carter Verhege, the new rookie. I think that'll be interesting to watch. Uh, I consider all three still rookies, even though Yanni's been on the team a couple seasons. Um, that's kind of a young, dynamic line. We'll see what happens. And then finally, bringing up the rear, the line of fear. Jamel Smith, who's shown himself to have physical prowess in the preseason, flanked by Patrick Maroon and Luke Witkowski. We'll look at what they can do a little bit later. If you're curious about Carter Verhege, the, the new uh, rookie, and you're wondering where he came from, he came from the Syracuse Crunch, and he was their points leader. I thought I heard that he was the top points leader in the AHL, but I don't know if that's true. And again, I'm too lazy to look it up. Uh, but if you look on screen now, you can see his stats were amazing on the crunch. He had 34 goals, 48 assists last season. Uh, plus minus was 26, which I'm a big fan of. It shows that he can play both, side, both ends of the ice. Um, he's uh, cautious when he needs to be, but he can put up the points as well on offense. 
If we look at Cap Friendly, uh, they predicted pre preseason. They took a look at our lines, and they thought Point is going to be flanked by Palat and Kucherov. So take the triplets line of old, replace Tyler Johnson with Braden Point, and that's what they think the, t the Lightning are going to go out with as their starting line. Uh, second line, they put Stamkos at center, flanked by Gord and Johnson. And then third line, Sorelli, Kalorn, Matthew Joseph, which is the magic line that you don't want to touch because last season they were fabulous. And then our checking line, this is a little old and dated, but they had Cedric Paquette, Danik Martel, and Corey Conacher. Obviously, things have changed uh, a little bit, but uh, we'll get to that. One thing I want to point out that I think is very important. Um, I thought about this a lot ever since we traded JT Miller away. I'm a big believer that on every line you have to have a gopher. And a gopher is a puck retriever. Okay, This is the player that is going to go after the puck behind the net. He's going to grind for it on the boards. He's going to be where the other team doesn't want him to be to get that puck, retrieve it, and continue the playmaking. JT Miller is fabulous at this. A huge loss to our team. Um, if we look at the projected lines from Cap Friendly um, pre-preseason, I've pointed out who the Gophers are in every single line. Palat, Gord, Kalorn, Danik Martell back then. All right. What I'm kind of concerned about with the post-preseason Cap-friendly lines, if you look at that first line especially, Tyler Johnson is flanked by Stamkos and Kucherov. Which one of those three do you want grinding on the boards and going full speed into a defenseman behind the net? Okay? If your answer is zero of three, then you kind of are getting where I'm coming from. Like these guys, you do not want grinding anywhere on the ice. Second line, uh, Sorelli, Palat, Kalorn, that one's stacked with Gophers. You've got Palat and Kalorn, both are excellent at this job, two of them. It could be interesting to watch that line go to work. Um, but, you know, I don't know. I guess if we want a power play every night with five on five, you send that line out. Um, anyway, you get my point moving down the line. Uh, we can see Cap Friendly then showing uh, Gord with Joseph and Verhegay as third line, uh, Jamel Smith, Maroon Witkowski as the fourth line. But uh, let's take a look at my own projections. While these players are injured, what do I think Coop should do? And, uh, hey, Coop, if you're watching, you know, hey, have a look-see, will you? So I'm thinking we roll out with Stamkos at center uh, while people are injured. Stamkos is centered, flanked by Plot and Gord. Uh, it gives him a little bit of muscle. We don't have to rely on Stamkos grinding it out. He's got two people who can pull pucks off the boards, and especially Gord has the speed to keep up with Stamkos and make plays. And Plot, if he's back to his old self... He's got really quick hands to handle Stamkos' quick passes and might be able to either pass to Stamkos or receive pucks from Stamkos, get some shots on that. Next line, we see I have Sorelli in the center flanked by Kalorn and Kucherov. This one looks delicious to me because Sorelli is such a crafty centerman. He's good on offense and defense. Imagine if... He can work together with Kucherov, passing back and forth and making plays. And then you have the power forward Alex Kalorn as your gopher to grind along the boards, get that puck back into the play. Third line, why don't we try the rookie who specializes at center and lit up the points in the AHL? Let's try him at center, guys. Put him on the third line. Flank him with maybe Martel and Joseph, uh, two speedy guys, and it would be an interesting kind of slightly chaotic rookie line. The last line, I agree with everybody else. Uh, let's put Maroon, Smith, Witkowski. Once the Lightning are healthy, what should we do? So here is our Stanley Cup winning lines, according to yours truly. I think Point should center a line with Stamkos and Gord. Uh, the Point-Stamkos uh, combo is irresistible to me. And sticking Stamkos in that uh, left side face-off circle when he's shooting on net, man, that is his sweet spot. Imagine Gord uh, forechecking, getting the puck to point. Point makes a quick little sneaky move over to Stamkos. Stamkos scores. Reverse it, Stamkos to point. Point scores. I could be watching that all day long and be very happy. 
Uh, next line, let's bring back the old triplets, right? They're famous, the triplets. I think there's some old Christmas sweater photo of them together. Let's bring that magic back. Uh, especially if this is Johnson's last season on the Lightning, which I think could be the, the case. Um, I would love to see that combo come back. Third line, the magic line, don't touch it. Sorelli, Kalorin, Joseph. And in the back, once Paquette's uh, healthy, that's going to be a fun line, okay? Paquette flanked by Wachowski and Maroon. <laughs> that might be the most entertaining line in hockey coming soon. Speaking of which, I call this the Papow line. You've got Patrick, Paquette, Witkowski. Pa-pow! Because let's face it, they're going to be using these to keep the other guys safe. No more Stamkos getting hurt, no more Kucherov getting hurt, no more Tyler Johnson getting hurt potentially uh, with these three on the ice every few minutes. Why do I think they should be called Pa-pow? Well, let's look at Sergey in an interview. Uh, when he was asked about the additions of Maroon and Witkowski, he said, They're responsible. They play a tough game. Everybody's so afraid of them. Nobody wants to go in a corner with them. It's just huge for us. Wapakett's injured. We've got Pagal. Okay, we've got Patrick Maroon, Jamel Smith, and Witkowski. Another three guys who are going to be hitting pretty hard and playing a physical game. Uh, looking at these new physical guys, Pat Maroon, right, our nor one of our newest forward grabs, uh, he signed a $900,000 cap hit for us this season. He was an unrestricted free agent. He's six foot three, 225 pounds, according to, I believe that was cap friendly. Uh, 31 years old. He plays left wing, right wing, shoots left. And most importantly, he has Stanley Cup winning experience. We have a Stanley Cup winner. Uh, we tried it with Chris Kunitz in the past. Didn't quite get the formula right, maybe. Uh, I liked Chris Kunitz. Don't get me wrong. I really liked his performance. But let's face it. Pat Maroon, I mean, he's going to punch his way to that Stanley Cup if he needs to. Speaking of which, if we look at HockeyFights.com, they've got some nice stats here. And wow, look at the fights of this guy. Anaheim Ducks, okay? When he was on the Ducks, he had 29 fights. Oilers, 15. St. Louis Blues, 6 where he won his Stanley Cup, the Devils won. Um, wow. That's all I have to say. The next guy on that line, Luke Witkowski, that I'm excited about. He's back. And honestly, the preseason, he looks better than ever. Speedy. He's not falling down as much. Because I used to watch him, and he was trying so hard to keep up with the lightning pace that he kept uh, losing his edge and going down on his knees. Um, I, I recognize that. I see what was happening. But in the preseason, he looks like he can hang with our team. Uh, he's a $700,000 cap hit. We've got him for two years. He's six foot two, 210 pounds. Again, I believe it was according to Cap Friendly. 29 years old. And what's cool about him is he can play right D or right wing, and he shoots right. So, wow, he's pretty versatile. And uh, he scares small children with his beard. Okay, I added that one in. But he probably does. If we look at his fight stats, I guess uh, he's younger. He must select his fights. Uh, he had nine with the Red Wings and four back when he was on the Lightning. And, wow, I don't know what the future holds, but those numbers are probably going to be rising. So speaking of, let's go back to the Kucherov line. You know, a lot of people probably ask, who should skate with Kucherov, right? Like, who, whose numbers do we want to pad, or who can we best put with Kucherov to light up the scoreboard. Uh, you know, I, I presented my pick that I think we should bring back the triplets line. Uh, give Tyler Johnson, he, he really maximized his point totals when he was on that triplets line. And one can make the argument, well, anyone with Kucherov is going to do great. But you know what? Uh, that triplets line is so good, I say put Ty Joe back at center on that line. I mean, where else does he really fit? That's my question mark. We have so many centers, he doesn't really belong on the wing, in my opinion. And then uh, Andre Pilat, again, if he's healed up and he's looking like his old strong self, I think he could be quite the playmaker. And he has so much experience playing with Kucherov already. They know what Kuch does. The eyes in the back of the head, the passes nobody expects. Um, Pilat and both Johnson are used to that. And I think they would maximize the line point totals if put together. Another question that comes up is, does Kuch need more muscle on his line? I do think Pilat can deliver that if he's healthy. 
Um, but speaking of which, we have an unverified recording that's allegedly maybe Cooch's cousin or Uncle Vlad. This is thanks to the Panama City Kid. I don't know where you got this from, but let's have a listen. Nikita, why, why you no call Mama? You know Mama get worried. She see you on the TV. She see you on the ice playing the hockey like you didn't play it here. What? 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 What world are you living in? Stop living in your fantasy world. And come home. Mama's very worried. You get better deal here anyway. Ma. Woman, Ma. I'm on his voicemail. Yes. Okay, I tell him call you. Just call Mama, okay? Just please, for the love of Slav, call Ma. Okay, I don't know about that call, but uh, it was entertaining anyway. So coming up on a future episode, possibly the next episode, let's take a look at our defense. Um, now that we have Shattenkirk and Ruta on the squad, uh, you know what would that look like? Is our defense going to perform as good as it has, or better, hopefully? And will Chernak continue to be in beast mode on D? This guy looks fantastic. And also, how fragile is Hedman? Because is he made of glass now? Is he getting older? What's going on with Hedman? Is it a reoccurring or recurring injury that keeps happening to him? So we'll look into this more on the next episode of Distant Lightning.